Well, we wouldn't be here today if uh, 25 years ago some really far-sighted people got together and decided that having a convention would be a good thing. Well, I wasn't around 25 years ago, and I think Kevin was, weren't you? <laughs> okay, he's going to tell us a little about uh, about. It. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about the beginning of Montevallo and some of the members who made Montevallo continuing growth throughout the years. Um, yeah, this is Montevallo's 25th anniversary, and it is the showpiece for the Northwest Historical Miniature Gaming Society. Um, but it's NHMPS is a lot more than Montevallo. The first thing I wanted to do is recognize all the other organizations that do such great work, um, and. It's not even just organizations. It's uh, it's the stuff that you do on Saturday at brick and mortar stores. Um, it's our sister organizations in uh, North Vancouver and Burnaby and White Rock in Portland, Astoria and Eugene, in Spokane and Tri Cities, in Tacoma and Olympia, in garages and game rooms and basements everywhere that make on flood and drumbeat and salute and tactical solutions possible. Um, your work is the laboratory uh, for each of these events, and we want to thank you for your contributions to the success of this weekend. Um, NHMGS goes back further. Uh, NHMGS is older than On Blood. Um, uh, it goes back to the early 80s. And um, we did lots of um, events in which we tried to, be, uh, to bring gamers together at places like Camp Long, at places like um, the Veterans Home in Russell. Um, and in uh, other places, but it was difficult. It was difficult, and um, there were guys who were um, hosting events like uh, gatherings like this in small uh, locations um, that were around way before I was. Um, but in 1991, we gathered in Phil Bardsley's basement. There were six of us, um, and I was the youngest of the six. Um, and. Uh, uh, really, I was the least able to contribute much beyond my time. Uh, on Blog's godfather was a fellow named Mike Pierce, and Mike had uh, had lived in the area and was a coast guard, in the Coast Guard, and he went back to uh, uh, the Washington D.C. area and participated in a big convention. And when he moved back, he said, "We need to be doing this." Um, so there were six of us that met in Bill Barsley's basement, um, and that included. Uh, Dick Larson, and I know Dick is in the building. Dick, are you here someplace? If you could wave your hand and be recognized. <laughs> Dick is the godfather of all things in HMGS. Um, uh, Bill Stewart was there. He was our uh, he was our treasurer who kept everything in a shoebox. It was awesome. Um, and Phil Barsley and Bob Mathler. I was, I was the, uh, the vice president and the nominal publisher of the Citadel because I had a personal computer and a printer. <laughs> um, so Mike came to us with this idea and he had even hunted down a location for us at a, uh, at a uh, yet unnamed uh, place. Um, and he settled on the Landmark Inn in Linwood and they would sell us convention space two days for $1,200 in catering services. So we didn't actually pay for our convention space, we paid for food. And um, for the first couple years, uh, for the first few years that we were there, um, we would stop gaming promptly at about six o'clock and all the attendees would line up for a big buffet. And um, it was an all-you-can-eat buffet and it was really enough to feed about 30 people. <laughs> and because I was kind of rounding people up, I, I got the leftover chicken feet and the potato salad. That was, that, that was about what I got. Um, but uh, Mike put down the deposit for the space on his credit card, and each one of us promised that we would make good on the debt if the convention didn't pay for itself. And of course, I didn't know how I was going to do that because I was a poor teacher at the time, and I think that my weekly allowance was five dollars. So I don't know how I was going to pull it off. Um, but the convention was uh, the most important thing is that the convention was a success. We did quite well. Um, Mike was a convention director. He got the um, sponsorships and dealers for the con. Um, I was the event coordinator, and um, it's my fault that we have this 
period system, uh, mostly because I'm a, I'm a teacher and so it looks like my classroom. <laughs> so you can blame that on me. Um, in the beginning, we invited out a guest and hosted him at his uh, expenses. Our first guest was Artie Conliffe of uh, Tactica fame. He was our first guest. Um, but we went on to include Rich Hasenauer of Fire and Fury, Toby Barrett from Thoroughbred Figures, Hal Thinglum of uh, M1. And each year, the convention successfully made enough money to pay its expenses a little bit more. And each year, we count on attendees to offer games visually appealing enough and engaging enough to bring in a, a attendees for that game in future conventions. The convention didn't remain in limit for very long. Um, I had to move on after a couple of years. Um, Tim McNulty uh, um, took on uh, being president of NHMDS and the convention director, and he really was instrumental in keeping the convention going. Um, Tim decided that it wasn't in our interest to continue hosting uh, people out here. The expense was a, a, a lot. Um, he also moved the convention to Fife, where he felt he could get a really good deal. Originally, the convention was um, on Armed Forces Day weekend, um, but he found that by doing it on Memorial Day weekend, we could get a really good deal on a bigger space for three days. Originally, it was a two-day convention, and Tim made it a three-day convention. Um, and he did a great job of, uh, of running things for uh, seven years, I believe. Um, and uh, so uh, the convention was in five at the Executive Inn. We'd probably still be there, except they declared bankruptcy in 2000. And they canceled our contracts. We actually had contracts that ran into 2003 or 2004. Um, I took over to, for Tim in 1998. And um, in, after 2000, um, we found ourselves searching for a new home. In 2001, we spent a pretty unsatisfactory year at the SeaTac Marriott. And when the Marriott refused to provide us with the same space in 2002, um, I was really fortunate that I was contacted by, by the Red Lion, who had the list of folks who had contracts at the, um, at the Executive Inn 5, and so we ended up here. Uh, this has been our home now for well over half the life of the convention. Um, the convention remains a success in terms of attendance and financials. Um, in this, our 25th year, we may have our largest ever attendance and the most games scheduled ever. Um, and it is with pride that I call Ontario the largest historical miniature convention west of the Mississippi River. And we're still going strong. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Turn. Color guard to the left, forward, march. Uh. Thank you. 